Vertigo Recovery Doctor. I'm Dr. Kevin Smith. I'm a vestibular physical therapist. And if you've ever experienced dizziness from loud noises, this video is for you. Now, if you haven't figured out what's causing your vertigo yet, feel free to down download my free ebook on the five most common causes of vertigo and how to recover from them. I'll put the link below. You'll sign up for my newsletter and it'll get dropped into your inbox. Um, now, what could be causing dizziness or vertigo from loud noises? I'm going to start off with some of the most less common reasons, um, and then we'll get into the some of the most common or typical reasons that cause this this problem. So, anything that disrupts how uh, the fluid moves or inside the inner ear is going could possibly trigger these symptoms. So, vestibular fibrosis, um, where some of the sensitive parts of the inner ear get attached to the stapes bones. Um, surgeries in within the inner ear, vestibular um, atelectasis, where there's this collapse of um, kind of the membrane, membranous labyrinth in the inner ear, uh, congenital ear malformations, infections of the inner ear. You know, if you have this inflammation and increase in pressure, that's causing some kind of abnormal fluid uh, movement inside the inner ear. Autoimmune inner ear disorders, uh, which can kind of cause a similar issue. Um, cholestia, cholesteatoma, which is a skin growth that can cause that can occur in the middle ear and lead to various ear related symptoms, um, or even an acoustic neuroma, which is a um, which is kind of a, a tumor that can be uh, on the inner ear or the um, the nerve, the vestibular nerve, and it you know can cause some disruption in some of these signals. Um, so those are some of the less common problems that could contribute to a similar issue of uh, loud noises causing dizziness or vertigo. Um, now, the most common reasons that would cause uh, vertigo or dizziness from loud noises is one, going to be semicircular canal dehiscence, um, and two, possibly perilymphatic fistula. So the most common one is the semicircular canal dehiscence. It's the syndrome where there's this thinning of the bone that's on top of the um, kind of the inner ear system that um, causes a disruption or um, you kind of think of it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a complete opening. While it could be a complete opening, um, it could just be a thinning of the bone that's allowing a little bit more transition, uh, sorry, transmission of sound or pressure into the inner ear, disrupting how the fluid flows. Um, so you can imagine if there's some sound pressure or increase, increase in pressure or increase in sound waves, that's going to affect that kind of delicate balance of the inner ear fluid and how things are, um, you know, moving in there, causing dizziness or vertigo. Um, Perilymphatic fistula is more of a, um, a disruption in the communication between the 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 middle ear and the inner ear. So the, the middle ear has air filled, is air filled, and the inner ear has the perilymph, that, that um, fluid within the vestibular system. And if there's some kind of perforation or disruption that can cause a leak of the, that perilymph. And again, you're, you're gonna get this kind of um, increase in pressure that, that shouldn't be there, disrupting how that fluid flows and possibly causing, causing dizziness. Uh, so what are the key symptoms between these two conditions that I'm really going to focus on? Because uh, they are more typical of what would cause dizziness with loud noises. So with, for a semicircular or for a paralymphatic fistula, um, you'll see it could be sudden or progressive hearing loss, dizziness, disequilibrium, um, positional dizziness is also possible. You could have tinnitus or the ringing of the ear, uh, ringing the ear. Oral fullness is something that can be common. Fluctuating hearing where it kind of comes and goes, um, or fluctuating hearing loss, I should say, um, are symptoms that you might see with paralymphatic fistula. For semicircular canal dehiscence, uh, you'll again see dizziness, oral fullness, and other symptoms you saw with paralymphatic fistula. Um, could be hearing loss, again, that you saw, same as the other condition. Um, so this one's particularly softer sounds at lower frequencies. Uh, sensitivity to sound, which we call hyperacusis. Um, you can, and then 
you've seen a lot of these overlaps between these two conditions. So it's kind of like, okay, well, how do you differentiate between the two? Now there are a couple a couple symptoms that are more um, characteristic of semicircular canal dehiscence than they are of perilymphatic fistula, and one of those is going to be um, what we call autophony. So this is a symptom of this perception of your kind of own bodily sounds. So this could, you know, maybe your your voice sounds distorted or uh, your voice sounds abnormally loud. Um, maybe you can hear your eyes blinking or your, or your muff muscles moving, um, you know, or joints cracking as kind of abnormally loud. So these internal body, body sounds are going to be uh, heard a little bit more loudly in the ear. And that's more of that semicircular canal, canal dehiscence than it is perilymphatic fistula. Um, now, a second thing is pulsatile tinnitus. So this um, hearing your heart heartbeat in your sound, now, or sorry, hearing your heartbeat in your ear. Um, this can be more than just semicircular circular canal dehiscence, but if you're having these other symptoms along with it, um, it's going to probably be a little bit more consistently found in semicircular canal dehiscence than it is in perilymphatic fistula. Um, and then the last one, which is this Tulio phenomenon. So this is kind of where this whole video started is that dizziness with loud sounds or with pressure changes um, is kind of what we call this Tulio phenomenon. So normally the sound in the, in the middle ear stimulates the stapes, one of those little bones that conducts sound to move, creating pressure waves that travel through the oval window to the cochlea um, so that you can hear. Now, then this pressure is kind of relieved via the round window in the in the inner ear. Now, the um, with a semicircular kind of how the hissence, you have that thinning or even maybe an opening of that bone that's on the superior aspect of that inner ear system. And now sound waves can be transmitted or escaped through that um, through that thinning and disrupt kind of the natural flow of how sound waves or pressure um, or sound energy usually flows through the inner ear. Um, and that can cause dizziness um, induced by these sound or pressure waves. Um, sometimes it causes even like a oscillopsy or this uh, jumping vision. Um, so that is something that is a little bit more found in semicircular canal dehiscence than it is with perilymphatic fistula. So the key differences kind of between the two, um, they can both cause this hearing loss, uh, vertigo, oral fullness, um, but with semicircular canal dehiscence, uh, you're gonna have that kind of bodily noises, the autophony, bodily noises heard a little bit louder. Um, and you're also going to have more of this Tulio phenomenon, which is this dizziness brought on by pressure changes or by sound. Um, now, perilymphatic fistula are probably going to be a little bit more associated with, um, with like even triggered by just different head movements, not so much with the semicircular canal dehiscence. Um, and this can be difficult to kind of differentiate, differentiate between the two, which is why it's great to find a this. Um, and ENTU specializes in vestibular, uh, vestibular di diagnoses or vestibular disorders who can run some of these tests to help differentiate, like hearing tests, um, taking your, your detailed history of your symptoms. Uh, they can look at VEMP testing, so that's vestibular evoked myogenic potentials, VEMP testing. Uh, and then also imaging. So if a high contrast, high resolution CT scan can look and see if there is actually a thinning of the bone that would lead, that would indicate more of that semicircular canal dehiscence. Um, so all in all, the the semicircular canal dehiscence is kind of that red that that diagnosis that comes up to mind when I'm thinking about okay, well somebody's experiencing. Uh, dizziness with loud noises. That's the one that I'm often thinking about, but you kind of have to think about, okay, well, maybe it's perilymphatic fistula as well, because some of those symptoms really overlap. Um, and 
as some of the some of the other diagnoses we listed in the beginning can also trigger it. And it's worth noting that sometimes people with Meniere's disease, because that can cause that has to do with a buildup of fluid in the inner ear, that can also disrupt the mechanics of the inner ear. Some people with Meniere's disease can experience this. Um, you know, Tulia phenomenon or this dizziness with loud noises or pressure changes. Um, it's just, it's not as common and it's probably not as repeatable as it is with a semicircular canal dehiscence. So what can you do for these conditions? Um, sometimes paralymphatic fistula can heal on its own. Um, sometimes it requires surgery to, um, to recover from. Oftentimes that paralymphatic fistula is gonna be caused by some kind of head trauma or from surgery itself for other inner ear problems that just actually gets perforated. Um, and it may require surgery to fix. Um, Semicircular dehiscence, uh, that one also may require surgery, um, kind of patch where that thinning of the bone is. And you know this is where you kind of get into where you should be working with a ENT who specializes in these disorders and getting their opinion on what's going to be best for you because it uh, may change or vary depending on each individual and what the best treatment may be. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you in kind of understanding, uh, you know, what might be causing dizziness with loud noises. Um, you know, think about some of these conditions that, that, any kind of condition that kind of has disrupts the mechanics of the inner ear might be associated with some of this, but you do really want to rule out some of these other, um, you know, semicircular canal dehiscence or paralymphatic fistula if you are getting these symptoms. Um, if you've had an experience with uh, dizziness, loud noises, and especially if you've gone through the surgery or if you have uh, found a resolution, something that fixed it for you, I'd love for you to share below so that you can help other people that might be experiencing the same thing. Uh, share your story, share what helped, um, and uh, help, help others that are going through something that, similar that you did. Uh, thank you for watching, and I um, hope this was help for you, helpful for you.